Hey guys, it's Levered01 here, and today we are going to be creating a solar system around a red dwarf. <laughs> Seriously. A red dwarf! Are you kidding me? This is the only time I get big stars. Hmm, too big. Nope. Nope, this is too big. Actually, no, it's fine. It's 203 Jupiters. It's a little small. Okay, so. Now that we came up with that, let's change the settings to my favorite stuff. There we go. So, we're trying to see how life might be on this sort of planet. So, let's, there are probably going to be a couple close-in ones. Then we'll put one right in the center. However, after reading an article in this BBC e Sky at Night thing, um, or no, that's like some show, um, in this article, like, BBC space thing, I read that, um, planets closer to their star may have their at the water in their atmosphere stripped from them. That's how Venus became such a waterless planet. And... So I'm wondering if the effect in red dwarf systems would be amplified due to this distance. Uh, one sec, some annoying pop-up. Keep getting forever. Dell, seriously, you have a problem with pop-ups. But anyways, so um, these planets might be lifeless. I don't know, that's just my prediction. But I'm just going to put a bunch of random things that represent dwarf planets out there and then it, we'll have one gas giant okay so this is our supposedly habitable planet most likely these planets will be tidally locked yep so they'll be tidally locked and let's see the material probably more going to be more iron than this and let's see let's take a look at their amp oh no wonder all right and surface pressure let's put that around because this is a little more massive than earth i'm going to be putting it at two two earths so this is uh all right and then let's see what is the greenhouse effect here 110 degrees celsius let's watch that tr surface temperature rise Honestly, zero albedo might be a little too little. Okay, so the temperature is going up. I'm seeing little weird divots, but let's just watch that happen. There's the star. There we go, and now. Now the temperature just trying going to get a steady cycle. There we go. No, that's shrinking. Let's bring that to three eight. Nope, that's rising. Three eight five. I think we're in a cycle now. Okay, materials, let's add water. Let's pause this. I can't see a thing. Ah, nope. Okay, here's the planet. Materials, water. Here's water. Yay! Now our planet has water on it. Awesome. But honestly, this thing would probably have a moon, right? So let's give it a moon. Maybe a tiny one, just like a couple small moons. That would look cool. There we go. Let's slow this down because it's going a little fast. Whoa. Whoa, wait. I want to see this. I feel like I'm seeing. Ah, I keep pulling up this stupid Windows button. It's cool to see how the orbits are evolving there around the planet. 
So here are all our psychotic dwarf planets. Uh, why do I call them psychotic? I don't know. Maybe we don't really care for dwarf planets in this simulation. They're sort of distracting me from the main point. By the way, some other interesting news from space. Oh man, I'm sounding like Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. No, I don't like that guy. Um, uh, let's see, the news, yes, the space news is that, we'll leave like two dwarf planets. Um, Pluto may have an, uh, a, whatchamacallit, underwater ocean, because there might be, it might be heated up by the moons that are around it, that are orbiting around it, and maybe radioactive materials in Pluto could heat it up for a bit, so it might be slowly cooling. Blah blah blah, NASA data shows that. Yes, this needs a ring. This plant needs a ring. Honestly, I feel like all of these look the same. Materials... It's gonna a little solid iron core. It's like... There we go. That, that looks a little more realistic to me. For at least like an ice giant like this planet. This thing needs a ring. As I was going to point out, I'll give it like a uh, advanced settings. Let's see, color. I want to give it cool wings like this ring texture, ring Saturn. Bodies instead of particles? I don't know. Hmm. Inner radius, spacing, random. Plane alignment body. Wait, show ring gaps. Yeah, that will look cool. Out of bounds movement. Okay, add ring. There we go. That looks cool. On a, no, that's a little small. Okay, seven. Okay. What? Huh? Whoa. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what's with this thing. So, let's just ignore that and not have like five things going on at once with this thing. So, there we go. Now we have this one. We have our Nusty. And also, let's, let's turn off zone. I don't think we need the zone anymore in the grid, you know. Okay, let's take a look at some of this more inner stuff. Let's take a look at... Wait, is this thing, like, habitable? It's got an atmosphere. I mean, it looks like, looks a little dry to me, but... Let's see, its temperature is... Where is its temperature? Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. I also think that looking at our own solar system, plants this far in won't be able to have moons. Okay, this thing, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a massive atmosphere, because it's sort of like Venus. On the other hand, it might be stripped away by solar radiation. I got a video on that, just so you know. For those of you who haven't seen it. But, alright, let's see. Now, I think we're going to take a look at this. Which planet was it? Yes, E, nope. Uh, nope. This is our dwarf planet, I think so. Let's see, let's take a look at the temperature. Also, a lot of these plants are covered in in ice so I'm gonna just simulate that got some ice going on but not enough in my opinion there we go there we go that looks icy enough to me and then our last plant our last moon yeah, this could be one of those that have an underwater ocean that's just slowly going away. There we go. Okay, so I w just want—I didn't really see the tidal evolution. Why do I call it tidal evolution? The orbital evolution from this, like these moons going around. Also, I know that the climate simulation on this thing, like. Yeah, but here, as you can see, these all change a little bit over time. And somehow I get the feeling that this will erratically smash into 
the planet. Okay. I'm also wondering what kind of view you'd get from one of these moons. Hmm. Okay. Okay, wait. We need a perfect shot. There we go. Uh, we need a really awesome screenshot for this. So what is it? Control, print, screen. There we go. I think I got it. But yeah. Like, if life evolved on this, that would be really cool. I mean, it would probably be a lot different from ours. For example... The photosynthesis would be a lot different because the host star would emit more infrared, emit more on the infrared spectrum. So, you know, I often sound like I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's just mostly I'm inarticulate when it comes to talking about scientific stuff. Seriously, stupid, like, notification thing. Oh, wow, I sound like a teenager. Oh, wait, I am a teenager. Dun, dun, dun. I was like, alright, let's see. Something space, something, something space, yeah. It would be really cool if life was existed on this world. It would be a lot different, like photosynthesis with the, would probably adapt and it would look more blackish. So sort of like this. And the life would probably be a lot more still on a tidally locked planet, for example. It also might be... It would be easier in some senses because the the honestly I feel like why does the atmosphere get simulated so well here then when you just turn it around you see absolutely no effect from the star like showing the atmosphere off I'd like to see that improved universe sandbox but but if you don't plan to make improvements I don't like that but just watch here the atmosphere completely fades from sight. Here, it doesn't. But yeah, yeah, something life, 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 focus, focus, lever to one, focus, yes. Okay, now that I'm in my zen mode for about the next 30 seconds, I will talk about how interesting life might be. For example, it might be easier for life to exist on this world because the planet does not rotate, so photosynthetic creatures don't have to go without their source of energy for half of the rotation so and second with the proximity to the star they might get a little more light however on the other hand I explain the electric wind effect or and also these stars tend to have a lot of solar flares that can often damage uh, atmospheres just like the electric winds and but yeah so there might be some interesting things about this so let's turn out turn on the view just once again and we'll run through the plants we've got Duratasac that's your name right Dirtasac Okay, this is the dirt sack that's covered in ice. And then we got Etunex, which is another dwarf planet out there. It's rotating very slowly. And then we have next in line is Ultine, our bizarre planet that's ring system is incredibly close. Why didn't I give this thing moons? One sec, people. Uh, moons. This planet deserves moons. Okay, there we go. Did I get that right? Okay, um... Okay, so this is its one moon in motion. Well, this looks kind of like Titan. Okay, motion, let's, uh... Inclination, no. Yep. Argument of perforation, eccentricity... Right ascension. Hmm. Inclination needs to shrink a little. 
maybe expand. Then right ascension needs to go down a little. There we go. I think we have it. I don't know, maybe Yes! I think we got it. There we go. Now Egregor Let's see, temperature, surface temperature, ninety seven degrees, atmospheric mass, surface pressure. Let's increase that. So sort of like more. Alright, there we go. So now we got a really thick atmosphere for this planet. Let's try to add just a teeny bit of water for it. You need water, planet. I mean moon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Totally looks like something you'd see. Okay, and then we have our Nusty with its moons here. So it's Windows bar, stop pulling up. You're bothering me. You're like making things happen. Then we got Tacid D Sack. You know, why couldn't you give these like scientific names? You never say Mox 2. Some of these make no sense. Erna Skoyevodino. Ah. Yeah, alright. Then we have our s star that looks like someone just misspelled star. Sator. Sator. There we go. Yep. But there, that's our little mini red dwarf solar system that we created. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm sorry that I didn't get videos out to you guys. I mean, it's school. It's school. Nothing else needs to be said. Well, actually, probably, but it's just too lazy or too tired to say that. It's school. School is annoying. It gets in the way of stuff. And I also may or may not have get gotten addicted to early access games like Unturned. I mean, comment down below if you want me to do that. I ju just know that's not really what my channel does. And also, if you want more videos and it, it's something different than what I have, honestly, it's kind of hard to come up with ideas for this, especially since I've done like a lot of what's what's possible to do in Universe Sandbox 2. There's always more, but usually I don't take this long to do my outro i'm sorry make sure to hit that like button and subscribe enjoy the video oh lever to one signing out